Well, it's Thursday, and you all know what that means. That means we got a whole lot of pro wrestling we're going to be covering. As you know, normally on a Thursday, we review MLW Fusion, Impact Wrestling, and of course, Ring of Honor. But however, we have a special Thursday episode involving Tokyo, uh, Tokyo's promotion known as PPP Tokyo that also took place on Thursday. Uh, this one has very interesting matches that took place. Uh, you may recognize some of the freelancers involved. But however, in MLW Fusion, there is the course of rivalry between the Calling and the Second Gear crew. We have Becca, who is still trying to find out more about who the hell is Love Dog. And we have plenty other things taking place. And as for Impact Wrestling, as you know, they continue to celebrate more with the 1000 episode. Don't forget the main event features 10 knockouts in a 5 on 5 tag team match. And of course, we'll find out who actually will be feast, who will be fired. And as for the Ring of Honor, as you know, the people will be celebrating with the fact we have a brand new ROH uh, world champion, but we also have uh, three title matches on the line the pure championship the women's championship and of course the six man tag team titles and of course we cap it up with some news updates to tell what's been going on in the world pro wrestling but amongst them as you may have heard we just heard the more uh, devastating news from wwe that they have released several wrestlers and that is something we definitely going to be taking much of our time about so let's get ready for another episode of deleted wrestle zone Welcome everybody to the Lead It Wrestle Zone. All things that is pro wrestling with AEW, NXT, New Japan Pro Wrestling, Impact Wrestling, the National Wrestling Alliance, various promotions, wrestlers, matches, and championships. I am your host, Jay right here. So, if you are new to the channel, welcome. This is a channel where we review a lot of pro wrestling shows from any part of the world. Not only here in the United States, but also in Japan, uh, Canada, Mexico, the UK, Europe, anywhere where, of course, wrestling is not as big as it is, but is definitely growing. And, of course, if you like this uh, this channel, please subscribe to us. We'll be doing a lot of daily reviews. And we also do, of course, discussion videos. We do also news updates. And, of course, the Unagi Sayaka Watch and plenty other things. So, if you like this episode as well, please give us a like on the like button and leave us a nice comment in the bottom. So... Let's begin with our very first review. This is from Japanese promotion based out of Tokyo, Japan, PPP Tokyo. Now, it's been almost, what, four months since I reviewed one of these shows. Now, they don't usually full, do full extent shows on their YouTube channel, but whenever it's once it's announced, that's when I actually see it. Now, their name of this show is called Reparty. Uh, this recently just took place. So, it opened up with the PPP, the PPP girls, uh, these valid girls who escort the wrestlers to the ring uh introducing themselves and we're probably going to be seeing them the entire time so that's how it is so you get the idea now um our first match is a intergender uh tag match we have marika kobashi teaming up with takayuki oiki they take on yuko miyamoto and ichika miyabi now this was a very interesting match because um if you guys been aware um um, um, Yuko Miyamoto is a deathmatch wrestler, so he would have yet done something hardcore into either Yuki or Kobashi. But unfortunately, near the end, of course, uh, Miyamoto accidentally misfired, hitting uh, Miyabi with the kendo stick. But it did gave, of course, um, uh, Kobashi to apply a DDT. Uh, I think it's like a, almost a somewhat version of Tornado DDT, but yes, it worked allowing her to pick up the win for her team. Now, next up, we have a six-man tag team match. We have Koju Takeda, 
Hartley Jackson and Koji Doi taking on Kass Sakamoto, Naoki Ta uh, Tanizuki, and Quiet Storm. So it's strange that you have one guy from from the BGI, uh, and of course two from uh, Bulk Orchestra involved. But it was a very hard hitting match. Like there are mem uh, some big members that would have been the easiest to take out the weaker opponent. But however, it was Quiet Storm with the Lariat that put away. Um, I think was it Hartley Jackson? Yeah, you know, Hartley Jackson to give himself the win. Now our next match is a one on singles match. We have Kentaro Hashimuru taking on uh, Ikudo, Ikudo uh, Idaka. Ozaki. Yeah, Ozaki. So, uh, Idaka. I think that's... Who, yeah, Idaki. Idaka. Basically, is a very interesting match. I know that um, Hashizu has been... Um, has less of experience in wrestling, but he's always up for the challenge. But what impressed me is... Idaka, how he a a ended this match... With a submission. Now, you have seen a headlock when it comes. We grab our hands like that. He was able to use his legs to do that. I was like, wow, that's impressive. Uh, so basically, he won when, of course, um, Hashizo, uh, uh, Hashizu actually just was unresponsive, couldn't move. So it was just like that. But however, there was a promo between both men. I think they were very impressive with each other, what to do. I was very impressed. But yeah. Now, our next match, we have the Yoshi wrestlers taking on. We have a tag team match. We have Surumi Natsu teaming up with Chanyota. They face against Ryo Mizunami and Maika Ozaki. Now, this is a very interesting matchup. Now, if you've seen uh, Mizunami and Oza um, Ozaka, they're both of the powerhouses type wrestlers you may have seen. It would have worked in their favor, and that's what it did. Now, Surumi Natsu, she's a bit more, um, how do I say uh, has her ways to go around the ring, especially if the ref is not used around. She uses the whip and all her other antics. However, she teams up with Chanyota, uh, who is a bit of a powerhouse herself, you know. But, however, in this end, it was, of course, um, when the ref was out, Tsurumi Natsu used the whip on everyone, on Ozaki and Mizunami. But in the end of this match, it was, of course, Mizunami who picked up the pinfall to uh, Chanyota. Now, our main event, we have Joji Otani, um, Daimojo uh, Soa, and Ayato uh, Yoshida. They take on, of course, Soma Takoa, um, Kisuke Ishii, and, of course, the boss, Kabuto Mitomi. So, you may have seen um, Ish Ishii and Tok uh, Takoa. Takoa, in fact, they're from Gambari Pro. So, it's interesting to see them there. But it was a pretty good match. But what I did like is, of course, it was Otani who picked up the win when he um, did a bridge suplex onto um, Mi uh, Mitomi, just like that, to pick up the win. And, of course, uh, post-match promo and all this, even Kona Oka was there. I'm not sure what's the business there, but he was there. So it was a pretty good show. So you guys should check it out on YouTube. They do. You can see the, the full show. It's called Reparty. So we'll see what happens until then. So right now, let's move on to our next review, MLW Fusion. Okay, MLW Fusion 183. Now, last week, we saw the sudden ri the rivalry between the second gear crew and the calling. However, out of nowhere, we saw the arrival of Jimmy Lloyd, who is a friend and comrade at arms of the SGC. And, of course, he's helping them out to defeat the calling. Which, of course, is going to be a good storyline. However, Jimmy Lloyd has his own plans as well. Basically, he is targeting Akira. And he wants the MLW Mid Middleweight Championship. So that's going to be a goal in his mind. And I'm sure everybody in the SGC would want gold. So we'll see where that takes us there. Now, our first match, we have Nolo Kitano uh, taking on Ichiban. So you probably would have assumed this is going to be a spectacular match. I have to say it was a spectacular match. It was really good. However, it was Ichiban with Ichiban time that put away Nolo Kitano to give him the W. Now, during an interview, Matt Cardona, as you know, showed up. 
uh, saying that he is now his ambition is to obtain gold in MLW. Now, as you know, majority of the titles are now in the possession of Alex Kane. Alex Kane saying that he's a ha probably will insult Cardona. The calling will probably will not tolerate him getting the national openweight championship. Whatever that he decides, but we'll see where that takes us. Now, and in a very interesting development, Sam Adonis was in the backstage, but all of a sudden, once again, the Azteca henchmen kidnapped Sam Adonis. I mean, first it was Caesar, then, uh, what was his name? Johnny Nitro, then Taya, now this. So the obvious question is this, what's going on? But, however, uh, one of the commentators did speculate, what if Selena De La Renta has something to do with it? I mean, there is the possibility. I mean, it's no secret that, of course, Selena could have wanted this as revenge to what happened to her. But we'll see how that goes. Now, during a little something called Sessions by St. Laurent, his special guest is a key uh, talk. First things first, he talks about Alex Kane saying that his boy... Davy Boy, uh, Davy Boy Smith Jr. will dethrone him to obtain, of course, the MLW World Heavyweight title. So this is something that possibly we're going to be seeing coming up as well. However, in the in this case, his guest is Becca, who, as you know, has been proceeding for the MLW uh, World Featherweight Women's Featherweight Championship. It's been denied because of that. Uh, Del Me XO doesn't think that she's a wrestler. She calls her a wannabe wrestler, acting like Britney Spears being a pro wrestler. But no, there's no telling when she'll be back. Now, in the back, of course, Mance Warner went to talk to the boss man of MLW, of course, Cord Bauer, telling him about violence, showing him some designs that he wants to do when he takes on, you know, the the calling, and of course. Court Bauer seems like he's very, very interesting. So that's what it is. But yeah. And of course, he left him a nice cold beer just in case he needs some cheering. Now, some interesting developments during the breaking news in MLW. It appears a micro man went missing. So nobody knows what happened to him. But later it was revealed Selena de la Renta feels like this thing with micro man turning MLW circus, it's done. It has. To. So he's sending him back. To Mexico to turn MLW back where it was in its rightful glory. So I don't know if Microman will come back, but I'm sure that's going to be interesting to see. Now our next match we have, of course, uh, well Becca joined the commentary team because she wanted to see this one. We have, of course, a little Guido taking on Love Dog. Now Love Dog is a number one fan of Becca. Becca has been rejecting him the entire time because Love Dog is in fact in love with Becca. But Becca has been rejecting him time and time again. But of course, uh, later on, uh, Love Dog really did pretty well. Especially if he faces a guy like Little Guido with, with a bit of the experience. But it was Love Dog with a springboard lariat that picked up a win. It's not the buckshot lariat. It's more like he sh shot, uh, sh uh, shot himself to the sides of the lariat and then bounced back and boom, just like that. Give it a bit more power. Something that, of course, um, I forgot Son of Havoc did back in Lucha Underground. But, however, as soon as the match was over, he went straight up to Becca to confess his feelings. Becca was not having him, so she caked, he caked him. So, yeah, he got caked. <laughs> now, our main event was supposed to be Akira versus um, Matthew Justice. But the match ended in a no contest because Jimmy Lloyd, who has his... His resorted issues towards Akira. Then the whole war between the calling and SGC has escalated far and farther. So that's what really took place. So that's how it ended for that match. But we'll see what happens next week. Right now, let's move on with our la with our next uh, review, Impact Wrestling. Okay. Impact Wrestling, as you know, they continue with more of the 1000 episode. It opened up with an Ultimate X. So, as you know, the Ultimate X is a construction that has an X on the top. And, of course, a little dangling X to the bottom. Whoever brings down the X with their feet on the ground, they will get an automatic 
opportunity of the X Division title. So we had plenty of wrestlers such as um, uh, Samurai Del Sol, Mike Bailey, um, who else? Alan Angels. I'm trying to think of someone else. Oh, yeah. Zachary Wentz was in it. Um, plenty of others. So it was a very chaotic. Anything could happen. But however, to my surprise, it was Alan Angels who picked up the one. Yeah, that former um, Moron 5, he gets a title shot. So yes, so someone tell the Dark Order that his their boy actually has a, is going to get a title opportunity. So that kind of sets it in. <laughs> so yes. But however, during the post-match comments, he actually said that he is going to be the face of the X Division. So we'll see because he's facing a veteran who's had a name of himself in the X Division and... 10-time X Division Champion. Our next match, we have Dirty Dango, along with Alpha Bravo, taking on Jake Something. Now, this match came around because uh, Jake Something did not like these remarks that Dirty Dango said, so he decided to take matters in his own hands. But, of course, the X-Factor of this match that took place just now is, of course, where um, Bravo was going to get himself involved, but, unfortunately, it did not go exactly his way uh it turns out that um of course bravo was going to use the flashlight on jake something and then of course he misfired and hit dango but it was of course something with the into the void and it was over just like that <laughs> but yes so jake something picked up a good win now as you know steve macklin was not happy with the result of what happened last week with the feast and fire match he feels that he d d now realized he did not get the job done when it came to, what's his name, to Rhino. And then all of a sudden, Rhino gored him through, and it was over. But however, Santino Morello told him that he was taking it too far. But the fact is, he said that uh, Steve Macklin did not, how do I say, finish the job. So basically, he does have a somewhat valid point. So he's going to make things a lot more worse. Now, our next match, we have Kenny King versus Eric Young. This was a match that was set upon by uh, Santino Morello. But, of course, uh, we have Kenny King with Shelton Jean. But Eric Young had the coach, Scott Demore, by his side. Unfortunately, this match ended in a disqualification thanks to Shelton Jean. But, however, the deputy director of authority showed up acting like Stone Cold, telling him that, he, that he's not going to let this happen. So, he turned the match into a tag match. Sheldon Jean was, became the tag partner of Kenny King, and Scott Demore became tag partner of Eric Young. When the match got restarted, all of a sudden, Diener and Khan showed up, which they, have, they haven't forgotten or they refused to let go of Eric Young. However, once again, Shark Boy shows up and decided that it ain't gonna happen. So he decided, let's turn it into an eight-man. So he called in a couple of guys that he knows that, of course, Team Canada actually knows too well, and that is... America's most one. Yes, sorry about your damn luck. Yes, they showed up. And I'm sure that was the last thing anybody expected, but it was a pretty good match. I think it was great. However, it was of course Eric Young with the spike pile driver onto Sheldon Jean that picked up the win. I thought it was fantastic. So it was great. So <laughs> I, I loved it. Now it's time for the feast and fire. Now remember four cases three will give a title opportunities while one while well, you're fired so let's start with case number one that is of course crazy steve and his uh case carried the digital media title so basically he could get an opportunity case number two that one was obtained by moose and moose opened it and he is now getting an opportunity of the world title which is something he has been longing for for a while since he lost it okay, now case number three uh this one was pertained by chris bay so he gets an uh so his is of course the world tag team titles opportunity which of course get guarantees them they'll get another shot at the rascals and then finally uh number four by yuya uemura he's fired now, I don't know if this is part of the whole story because, as you know, we've been seeing a lot of the uh, wrestlers that went on excursion will be returning. I'm sure Yuya Umura is one of those guys, but we'll see what happens until then. Our next match we have, of course, is Trey Miguel versus Josh Alexander. 
uh, because of the mess that happened last week, of course, this is was becoming chaotic. But of course, Sag Street Wentz was going to get himself involved. He actually need Josh Alexander, but uh, um, Alex Shelley showed up, spit water in his face, and whacked him with the belt. So basically, I think he wants him to stay 100% because I'm sure people would doubt that Shelley would actually survive Josh Alexander. But we'll see when that happens. Uh, but however, um, of course, Alexander defeated uh, Trey with the C4 spike. It was over. But yeah, a pretty good match. But we'll see when that match between Shelly and, uh, and Alexander will take place. Now, great news. As you know, uh, Bountiful Glory is almost coming up. Um, they announced that Will Ospreay will be, in fact, involved. But however, his opponent is none other than speedball mike bailey so that's going to be one huge match now speaking of bailey he was in the back actually he had a little chit chat with jonathan gresham as you know gresham was not happy with the results of people cheating their way through every match so he felt that you know but of course mike bailey decided to put himself in the match against him you know try to cheer him up in some capacity but we'll see what happens till then Now, the Rascals, as you know, they're not too pleased how things have turned out for the best. But John Schuyler, who's been asking for a title opportunity, apparently ABC has told him that your chances aren't happy because this these briefcase is, in fact, guaranteed a spot. But Schuyler doesn't believe that, so the Rascals just quietly disappeared. So I think the Rascals should be now worried that the fact is you've got um, tag title uh, opportunity. They don't. So the good hands chances of having a tag team title opportunity that may not happen. Now, our main event features the not greatest knockouts match ever. We have Awesome Kong, Gil Kim, Mickey James, Jordan Grace, and of course our knockouts champion Trinity. They take on Savannah Evans, Giselle Shaw, uh, Tasha Steeles, Angelina Love, and of course Deanna Perrazzo. Uh, you probably can guess this match was crazy from the very beginning. It was fantastic. But, of course, it was um, the implanted um, buster by Kong onto, uh, who was it? Onto Giselle Shaw to pick up the win. So it was a fantastic week. But, however, uh, J um, Jai Vidal got himself paper bagged by the beautiful people. It's been a long time since we've seen it, but it's great to bring some of the nostalgic back. So, uh, pretty good show. I enjoyed it. So I think that's pretty much it what we have for Impact. So let's move on with Ring of Honor. Well, Ring of Honor. As you know, we have a brand new Ring of Honor World Champion. And in Kingston, I'm sure that the ROH fan base are ecstatic, happy to see Eddie Kingston precede this belt. So I can't wait to see what he does now as our current and new ROH World Champion. So we'll see who will be the first to get a crack at him for when he makes his first title defense. Now our opening match features the uh, ROH Pure Wrestling title, Nick Wayne versus Katsuyori Shibata. Now you probably can guess that this match was going to be interesting since Nick Wayne makes his ROH debut. I have to say... This is a different type of style of wrestling that I don't know if Nick Wayne can do it. But I can say this, that he has held his own. Even though he learned from the best, he learned from various wrestlers along the way. But however, um, he, uh, how do I say, he wasted his rope breaks, all three of them. Shib Shibata didn't. However, it was going to be exactly like how he thought it would be. Shibata applied the sleeper hole, then finally PK and retain the title. But in the end, Shibata showed respect to Nick Wayne, who he sees he's the future of pro wrestling, which is a good thing to see. Now, during an interview, we do see Lee Johnson, who is trying to understand what in the world was going on last week. As you know, he was in a match against Shane Taylor, but he completely got distracted with the sudden appearance of Lee Moriarty. It appears that Shane Taylor is recruiting more people to be part of the Shane Taylor promotions 
So there's going to be the two Lees in the same match later on. Our next match, we have Diamante versus Katie Bright. Uh, I have seen Katie Bright before. I just don't remember it was in AEW Dark. But however, I can tell you this match did end with a somewhat version of a crossroad by Diamante to Katie Bright, um, giving her the win. Now, our next interview, we see the infantry Ill and Willie Mack along with T Trish Adora. They sent out a straight up promo saying that they will be the ones to dethrone um, the Mogul Embassy and become our brand new ROH World Six Man Tag Team Champions. But what does this mean for, their, for the match at Rampage against the Elite? Well, we'll find out soon enough. Now, is the battle of the Lees. We have Lee Johnson and we have Tiger Style Lee Moriarty. So you probably can guess that there was going to be a lot of technical aspect coming from Lee Moriarty, which it did. Uh, he was able to put um, uh, Lee Johnson away when he applied a leg lariat, giving him the win. So basically, now we're seeing Shane Taylor promotions becoming new and improved as they always been. The last people that he had in the promotions, it was the... SOS, um, Bishop Khan, and I forgot who was the other one, but yes, but we'll, oh yeah, oh yeah, and Moses, but, uh, now it looks like Shane Taylor Promotions is going to be rebuilt. Now, as you know, Athena has, um, what's her name, Billy Starks as a minion, and of course, Lexi helps out, so they're in minion in training, MIT. So they're doing all this. All the wrestlers are like, you know, watching what the hell. But the one person that they tell they had the boo was Willow Nightingale and all that. So I thought it was crazy. But it was fun. Now, our next match, we have Trish Adora versus Mercedes Martinez. Um, of course, this was going to be a much, uh, uh, like how I say, for Trish Adora is trying to pick up her a good win, but however, Mercedes Martinez, who has been rejuvenized, recharged since her injury, I have to say she pl uh, played out pretty well when she applied the Brass City uh, Sleeper, and that was it from there. Now, the ROH women's title we ha was on the line. We have a former champion, uh, also known as a Knockouts champion, uh, Angela Love taking on Athena. You probably would have thought that there was going to be some interesting dynamics, not to mention the cheering from Billy being there. But, however, it was, of course, a, um, a niece to face by Athena to Angela Love to retain the title. So, yeah, that's how it goes. Now, our next interview, we have Griff Garrison along with Maria and Cole Carter. Um, as you know, he is trying to get back into the into the game since his return from injury. Uh, he is trying to build up what he thinks he could do. But however, they'll be taking on against Action Andretti and um, Darius Martin. Now our next match, we have Willow Nightingale, um, Kiara Hogan, and Sky Blue taking on the Renegade Twins, Charlotte and... Uh, Robin and they teamed up with Layla Hirsch now It was interesting to see Layla Hirsch because we know the last time we seen Layla Hirsch She was being scouted by Maria uh, Of course she did saw the whole thing, but however it was a very teamwork based between Willow Kira and Sky I have to say they did co uh, Really coexisted very well, but in fact they it was Sky Blue with the code blue onto Charlotte Renegade one two three it was over right from there now, our next match, uh, apparently a new trios team was formed with Tony Nese at the helm. He recruited the members of the Spanish announced project, Serpentico and um, Angelico. But apparently, they don't like what they're seeing. Both, they're like saying this and Angelico goes, man, that guy's vibe was off. And this is where Serpentico, he is a pinche culo. And of course, Lexi goes, see... Basically, they just are not fans of them. That's the thing. Next match, we have VSK, or you guys may know him as Jeeves uh, K. Uh, he's back to his old name. So, as you know, because uh, the Trust Busters are disbanded, I believe. But um, it's great to see him now. He's in action. He faces against Ethan Page, who is now 
how do I say, getting his groove back, uh, going where the real competition is, which is in Ring of Honor. And of course, he is doing that exactly. He even mentioned that during an interview that day. But it was, of course, um, the ego's edge that put away uh, VSK. And I think this is a, a, ba a better version now of Ethan Page when he was in AEW. Where we need to see him, okay, he needs to be more into the game and the competition. So we'll see where that goes. Now our next match, we have Tony Nese teaming up with the Spanish announced project Angelico and Serpentico. But however, they decided to interrupt Tony Nese's little workout think, session, but it was interrupted. They were like, we're not having it. So we're here for a match. So they face against Gravity, Hijo de Vikingo, and of course, um, Metallic. Now, at some point of the match, I wasn't too sure if I saw this. Clear, uh, seems like Helico might have hurt himself. I mean, he's been known to be in that type of situation. But however, of course, Sterling was going to get himself involved in this. Uh, but however, the last final straw, with, with, because of course, Serpentico and Helico did not like how, of course, um, Tony Neves was giving them barking orders. Uh, they were about to remove the mask of Metallic. But Serpentico stopped them because he felt that that's a disrespectful way to do that. Of course, they were both Angelico and Serpentico. We're out. We're leaving. But it did give time for, um, what's his name? For, um, uh, of course, a senton by Metallic to Nice to pick up the win. So this is bad luck for Tony Nice for what he get himself into. Now, our, our next match, we have Cole Carter and Griff Garrison taking on Action Andretti and Darren Martin. Now, however, as you know with Cole Karn, he is showing a different type of attitude than he ever was. Uh, apparently, Griff Garrison was not actually kind of like being on board about it. But, however, that kind of cost them the match. Uh, it did gave Action Andretti a springboard 450 onto Cole Carter to pick up the win. However, I don't think Murray is happy with the results. I think maybe the problem is Griff Garrison who refuses to cross the line. So we'll see what happens next week. Now our main event we have is of course the ROH World Six Man Tag Team Titles. Uh, Willie Mack and the Infantry taking on the Mogul Embassy. I have to say the match was incredible. I mean, I have to say this is like one of those matches where it tells us, okay, will the Mogul Embassy will be strong enough to defeat the, the Elite? Well, we'll see. I mean, it was great. But however, in the end, it was the open the gates onto Willie Mack that allowed... Uh, Christian Cage to pick up the pin on Mac, and that was it. So it was over right from there. But we'll see what happens on Rampage. So I think that's pretty much it what we have. So let's move on to our last and final thing, news updates. <laughs> Okay, so this is our news updates what we have. Prestige Wrestling for the, the Respect Issue event that's happening on uh, this weekend announced for a four-way match. Uh, we have Diego Hill versus Tra uh, Travis Williams versus Allen Angels versus J uh, Jordan Cruz. So that's going to be a good match to watch. Now, Spark Yo Yoshi Peruso of America has announced for two new... Uh, Books bookings that they have for two ta uh, talents on two different days on the east and west. For the west, we have that will take place on the 11th in the LA Dojo. They have Johnny Robbie will be in it. And as for the east, it, we got Brittany Blake that will be on the 14th of October. Now, finally, as you know, the recent news has came around in WWE that there were some releases that happened. I think some of you may are not happy with the result how this turned out. So here's a list of people that were released from WWE today. Mustafa Ali, Emma, Rick Boggs, Aliyah, El Elias, Rick Moss, Top Dollar, Shelton Benjamin, Dolph Ziggler, Quincy Joan, Bryson Montana, Dana Brooke, Mace, Mansoor, Davicato, Shanky, Ulyssa Leon, Daniel McArthur, who never made his in-ring debut, Kevin Venture Cortez, um, Alexis Gray, and Brooklyn Barlow. 
Now, some of the names I did not expect that that was going to happen, but um, I'm sure that many of you WWE fans are not happy with it. I know some of you are saying that, will they end up with AW? Well, look, they can't just take everyone. There has to be a, some sort of valuable they can give to the company, a valuable asset to what they can do. You know, like, for example, Mustafa Ali would be one I can think of that would fit in. I wouldn't be surprised if Top Dollar goes to AW to team up with, of course, Swerve. That is an obvious choice. Um, let's see who else I can think of. I think that's pretty much it that I can think of. But yes. But however, um, Matt Cardona even tweeted this earlier. He he said this. To those who were just released, this can be the end of your career or it can be the beginning. Look at yourself in the mirror and decide. I promise you the work and the money is out there. It's not easy. It's a grind. It's a hustle. It's frustrating. But it also can be incredibly rewarding in more ways than one. If you work your fucking ass off, I hope to see you, a lot of you down the road. So basically, Matt Cardona, as you know, who was one of those, those wrestlers that was released a couple years ago. He knows that it wasn't easy, but he worked his butt off. I mean, he has been in place. I mean, look, he's been with um, AEW. He's been with Impact. He's been with, um, who else has he been in? He's been with various promotions, not to mention DDT Pro Wrestling. Uh, he, he's been everywhere at where he was going. So he's encouraging them. You can treat this either the end or just the beginning. So we'll see where these guys will go from there. And I think that's pretty much it what we have for uh, our news updates. So let's just call it a day. Well, I hope everybody enjoys this episode. Coming up, we have, of course, AEW Rampage and NXT Level Up. However, I have just recently found out I'll be able to see uh, Stardom Day 18 as we draw closer and closer to the end of the of the five star Grand Prix, I'm so excited. Now I haven't decided yet if there's going to be any um, thing new I want to put in, but we'll see how that happens. But for now, we'll just leave it as we as it is for now, and I'll see you guys later. So I will see you guys in the next DWZ time, same DWZ channel. I must bid all of you adieu. So goodbye. Mwah. And have a nice day. Bang.